Yeah, it's great being here. Thanks a lot for the introduction. Yeah, I, I thought I, I go for this T-shirt today because I'm, I'm still fascinated what it w was possible with 60, just 64 kilobytes of, of RAM. And um, our technology is all about efficiency, so um, I think it's a good fit. And I like the machine very much. Um, so you probably, not all, but a lot of you have heard about Ubitricity, as my, my co-founder Knut has been here um, already in a couple of events. And so I'm, I'm very pleased to be here and to, to tell a little bit just only about what we do, but in particular about where we are and where we are going to. Um, I put on the slide controlling access, controlling data, controlling value add. Um, Ubitricity is about control, about control for electricity data, which is required to monitorize the value chain of energy that can be connected with an electric vehicle. Um, I think I do not have to talk a lot about that, but it is really, really important to understand that electric vehicles are so much more than what we know as a vehicle today. Um, electric vehicles allow for completely new kinds of distribution of and, uh, and of completely kind of new value add. Um, this is really important to understand because the only question that is important in the end is who will be able to monetize the value add? And this is where we come into play. Um, I brought that, that little graph and um, I think it's important to understand that the value add from the battery in this car with regard to energy is to fill the battery, so to internalize the value add for the energy supply, and that whenever the car is not moving, it can be connected to the power grid and serve as a large storage, and you can build a flexible distributed storage system. And the question is, how do you monetize exactly these two opportunities um, if you are, for example, someone selling the car? And this is what we are. We are an energy market enabler for these kind of value adds. Um, the logic of Ubitricity is comparatively simple. We think infrastructure not from the grid, but from the car. Why do we do that? Because the car is not the asset, but the battery is the asset, and the battery is mobile. And what you want to commercialize, energy-wise, is a large battery. And if you do not know everything about this battery, in terms of when it is used, how the electricity is taken, um, when it can serve as a storage, when it is connected, you can never, ever commercialize the full value of the battery neither for energy supply nor for storage. So you need to know everything about the battery, energy data. You have to have the control about this energy data. And very important, if you want to commercialize anything at all, you need the contract about the battery with the user. If you look at this whole game from the infrastructure side and you have a charge spot and some random battery comes along, you, you will never be able to get the right to control this battery quite easily. So the whole logic is very similar to what we know in telecommunications. You have just one mobile device, you have one provider, and you have the possibility to commercialize everything with the customer because the contract is linked to the mobile device. And our technology allows to link the contract to supply the car to use it as flexible load, to gather and collect all the data, and to control the load completely to the car. So we shift the energy value chain. You know that we are currently doing this with a smart mobile meter. Yeah, we, you can call it a smartphone for energy that allows you to access your electricity service practically everywhere because the car brings the intelligence. Eventually, what we do here with our smart cable um, will just be an intermediate step because about 80 to 90 percent of what we built into this smart cable is already existing in the average electric vehicle. And um, so it will be a very good cost down step to integrate all the technology. Most importantly, the 
smart mobile meter allows to bundle it with a random electricity service of any given electricity supplier. So, for example, Gazak, a Berlin-based um, electricity supplier, supplies the cable and you charge Gazak electricity. Um, you know about this here. Um, the good thing on the other side of the market, the infrastructure side, is that costs are dramatically reduced. If the car is smart already and brings all of the services you require for metering, authorization, billing, smart grid control, you only require a securely switchable, identifiable socket on the other side. And you know that we have a couple of years begun to integrate these sockets also into light poles. Um, good news, um, our, our technology is growing very well. In particular, in UK, in London, we have uh, more than 200 installations in London at the moment. And we are very happy that our latest strategic shareholder, Siemens, um, is supporting us in London to grow the technology. Uh, we just applied for um, a framework tender. And um, so let's see. Um, I think we have a good chance that we will see some thousand at the end of the year. Um, another very important use case that demonstrates how important it is to have the metering together with the asset and the contract and the tariff, together with the asset, is company cars. If you charge your company car in your private home, who's going to pay the bill? Obviously, this is your employer and not yourself. So if you have the contract, the metering, and the billing linked to the car, the car takes care that the electricity at your household is directly billed to your employer. We do that, for example, the latest with Baiva, where we are very happy about it. We do that with uh, DKV, DKV, uh, another large supplier of fuel carts. Um, we do that with a, a group company of BMW and uh, of Fiesmann, Digital Energy Solutions. And um, there's a great need to bring electric mobility into fleets for exactly this product. Very important, real estate. If you imagine you have built a new high-rise building with like 400, 500 parking spaces in the garage, what you require today is you need a building that is EV ready. Everyone has this requirement. What you do not like as owner of the building is high CapEx and what you hate is high OpEx and what you hate even more is if you have the hassle with all the billing for each individual lessee using the infrastructure. What we can offer? Just our simple socket, the securely switchable wall box, a docking station that can be installed for low capex, that comes practically without opex, and the whole hassle of the, the service of an electricity supply and billing is shifted to the lessee side, on the mobile side, and the lessee has full freedom of choice for which kind of electricity provider he uh, decides. Um, so at the latest, obviously, we're working to form one large distributed energy system and um, the, the logic that a car should be always connected to the power grid when it is not moving um, is right and will stay right. And the more we will see electric mobility, the more we will see the big advantages um, these cars will not only bring for mobility, but in particular for our power grid as well. And, well, we offer just simply the most efficient opportunity to connect the cars everywhere to the power grid and to even make sure that the electricity provided for the car is purely produced by dedicated renewable energy resources. What our technology makes possible is that the car can deliver services itself and can receive services itself. So we make it a part of a new Internet of Energy things. And um, yeah, in the end, um, we built just a platform, database platform that make it possible to enable everyone, um, some uh, players already being utilities and players not yet being utilities. For example, mineral oil, for example, automotive, who urgently will seek new opportunities for money and for value chains to get exactly this value chain. And um, maybe at the last uh, analogy, 
If you think about how much phone calls you make today at home with your landline, fixed landline phone, and with your mobile phone at home, then you see that it is very easy if you have a mobile device to capture the value chain in existing ecosystems if you can intrude with that device the existing ecosystems. And I think the only thing um, you all can ask yourself is if the landline telephone rings, you probably know um, who it is. So um, we are currently fundraising again. We just started a, a new round, a growth financing round, and um, I'm very happy to discuss uh, participation uh, in this round. And um, I'm very pleased to answer everything that I haven't said right here. Thanks a lot.